Happy Mother's Day. And we've got to know that Jesus is in all of our storms. We want to honor all of our mothers. We honor you not only today, but every single day. All mothers and women, we honor you today. But today may not be a happy day for some women. You may have recently suffered a miscarriage or stillbirth. A woman who may have discovered that she is unable to conceive a child naturally. A person whose mother has recently died. A woman whose child has died. A woman who wants to be married but is unable to and wonders if she will ever get a chance to become a mom. A person whose mother was abusive or negligent. A woman who has chosen to place a child up for adoption. A woman desperately wants to see her children, but circumstances stand in the way. A young woman who is pregnant and does not feel ready to be a mother. And a woman, a mother praying for her family, but feels the more she prays, the worse it gets. Today, we pray that this sermon offers some hope and encouragement during your hours of despair, grief, anger, and disappointment. Believe that God is there with you in the middle of your storm. And he is in control of the storm. In the Old Testament, in Psalm 107, we see the power of God to calm the storm. Only God can calm supernatural storms and even natural storms. In Psalm 107, verses 23 through 32, it says, they that go down to the sea in ships that do business in great waters. These see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For he commandeth and raiseth the stormy wind which lifted up the waves thereof. They mount up to the heaven. They go down again to the depths. Their soul is melted because of trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wits end. Verse 28, then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble and he bringeth them out of their distresses. He maketh the storm a calm, so that the waves thereof are still. Verse 30, then are they glad because they be quiet. So he bringeth them unto their desired haven. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them exalt him also in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. So verse 27 shows that these sailors could not control the ship. They were on this ship and it was out of their control. Their wisdom, their knowledge was consumed. They were only left to the mercy of the sea. They were at their wits end. How many listening today have been at their wits end? Trying to keep it under control. Trying to keep everything 
just right. But we realize at some point or another, our human abilities run out. In 2 Corinthians 12, 9, it says God's strength is made perfect in our weakness. Our strength can only go so far. God has to take control. We have to depend on God. In verse 28, it says they cry unto the Lord in their trouble and he bringeth them out of their distresses whether God gives you the strength to go through the storm or he calms that storm he will answer your prayers cry unto the Lord don't run away from God because you feel like God has abandoned you you've got to stick with the Lord even in times of troubles don't wait till you're at your wit's end to seek God with all of your heart. Seek God with all of your heart daily. And don't just come to God when you have problems. Seek him in praise and worship in your life. These words are also in the same Psalm 107 verse 13 and 19 the words that are in verse 28 you can read that later verse 29 jesus is the one that maketh the storm a calm so that the waves are still jesus can cause the storms to subside these can be unseen storms that affect our lives we can see ourselves as sailing through this world in a sea of life and sometimes the waters can be calm but other times storms can come out of nowhere trouble can affect our lives trouble family members sickness death financial troubles unseen they can shake us they can shake our foundations it's important to put jesus as the rock of your foundation to put his word as your foundation and your rock just when the sun is out and shining don't forget about jesus don't forget about the things that he did for you up until that sunshiny day. Because all of a sudden, the waves could start bashing up against that ship. The storm could start raging. And we pray that fear doesn't overtake you during those times. We talked about being anxious and under fear. And falling into depression and falling into God has left me. God has forsaken me. God, where are you? He's right there. But those things that we go through, they shape our faith. They either draw us or drive us. They either draw us closer to God or drive us further away from God. Which would you rather do? In verse 30, the Lord brought the sailors to safety, to their desired destination. Verse 31, this was a reason to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for every victory. Whether little victories, oh God, that was a good victory. That was a good victory. The next day. God, when you going to do something for me? We easily forget the things that God has done for us. We easily forget that God is, has his watchful eye on each and every one of us because the Bible says we are the apple of his eye. Jesus said in the book of John 
that I will not leave you nor forsake you. So we cannot say that God is a liar because the Bible says he is not a man that he should lie. Praise the Lord for every victory. And don't forget what he has done in your life. Verse 31 is mentioned verbatim in the same Psalm 107 verses 8, 15 and 21. Then we see in the New Testament in Mark chapter 4 verses 35 through 37 that another storm was brewing. This is in the New Testament. And Jesus had just finished teaching the parable of the sower. We have to remember Jesus was in his flesh body the bible calls it he was made flesh and dwelt among us but at the same time we've studied before that jesus was still god so when we look at this he was teaching the parable of the sower in those previous verses and afterward jesus and his disciples boarded a boat so in Mark 4, verses 35 through 37, and the same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. Verse 36, and when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship and there were also with him other little ships verse 37 and there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full so the disciples had fished in the Sea of Galilee before the Sea of Galilee was not new to them but this storm put a lot of fear on them it was probably a storm that they had not seen in the past the disciples could see the effects of the physical storm all around them but there was something going on in the spirit realm as well. They were full of fear. And when things happen to us, to our loved ones, when one of our loved ones falls sick, one of our loved ones get in an accident or goes the wrong way, the first reaction we can have is anxiety and fear. So we must keep our minds covered that's the beauty of staying in the word of god we must stay centered and focused in the word of god on a daily basis we must pray for one another no person is a lone ranger island every person needs prayer support they need others to reach out to them at times and they can reach back. That is the beauty of the body of Christ. So we have to know that people are going through some of the things that we're going through or maybe all of the things that we're going through. And we have to think about one another and pray for one another and not let the spirit of fear overtake our lives because it will consume us and it will keep us from seeking God matter of fact it would start driving us the other way from God so the disciples could see the effects of that physical storm all around them this storm just like the sailors in Psalm 107 this storm was beyond their control and when things get beyond our control, we get nervous. We get shaky. We get insecure 
because we're used to having things in control, especially if we have a strong mind. We're used to having things in control, under our control, but we must learn to give it over to Jesus. We must learn to build our faith enough through the word of God, through prayer and the things of God, build our faith up enough to where we can trust God and have peace in the middle of the storm. Even while the storm is still happening, we can still have peace. Even if Jesus steals that storm, it doesn't matter if he steals it or he doesn't steal it. We will still have peace because the Bible says that we can have peace. Verse 37 said, and there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. So now here the water comes into the ship. And you can imagine yourself if you've never been on a ship. I've been on a ship out in the middle of the ocean. And believe me, the sea is a powerful thing. If you have a 90,000 ton ship, like some of these carriers are, get tossed around like a rubber ducky in the ocean, you know that's power. But we can't think, and this was an example of that anxiety. If I lay in my, my bed and just start thinking about what if a bomb hits the side of that ship? Because the birthing spaces on the ship where people slept were below the water line. Some of them. So if water rushed in there, there would be no chance for us to escape. So I imagine that the fishermen, their mind was playing with them. All kinds of the fear thoughts were producing all kinds of imaginations in their mind. The Bible tells us to take authority over the imaginations in our mind. We talked about those thoughts that were not real thoughts. They were not factual thoughts. They were thoughts that were imagined in our minds. And those are the most dangerous ones. Because they can bring fear. They can make you feel helpless. So we have to speak the word of God. Not only read the word of God. We must speak the word of God. Just like Jesus did coming up here. How many listening to this are in a great storm right now? We may feel that we don't have any control over the situation, but that's okay. Because in our weakness, he is made strong, but we must do what we know. We must speak the word of God. We consume it. But we must speak it. Lord, you said, speak to the mountain and it shall be moved. I'm speaking to this mountain in the name of Jesus Christ. Do the word of God, whether you think it's going to work or not. Because you are speaking is not just a dead word in your belly. That's why people can float on the Dead Sea. Because there is no outlet for that, that water. And it all gathers there. If the word of God just gathers in your vessel. And you don't speak the word of God. It will not profit you. Because when it comes in. It has to go out. Whether it's being lived in your life. Or whether you're speaking it. Or whether you're sharing it with someone. You must use that word that God gives you. It's not just because we have the label of Christian. That's the reason we read the word. Yes, that is a reason. But it is not the full reason. 
the word of God has life and it gives our words life. The more we speak it, the more we can see things come to pass in the name of Jesus. Many of us have been praying and praying. It seems like nothing is changing. We've got to keep standing. Don't give up. Don't wallow in despair, grief, anger, and disappointment. We got to wake up Jesus. Just like the disciples we see in verse 38, that the disciples in frustration wake up Jesus. In verse 38, and he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest not that we perish. Imagine seeing Jesus doing these miracles, teaching these sermons and with great wisdom. And they're saying that to Jesus. Of course, Jesus cares. But I have to point out to you, as I did in the beginning, it says Jesus is sleeping, which shows his humanity. He had just preached that big sermon of the parable of the sower. He was in a human body and he was resting. This scripture is the only reference to Jesus sleeping that I can find in the Gospels. He had a long day. He had preached. Jesus was like us in all ways, though he was God, yet without sin. That's the exception. A couple of scripture references for that are he was without sin in 2 Corinthians 5, 21 and in Hebrews 4, 15. But back in Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 38, the disciples were in a panic and they woke up Jesus. We going along, not thinking about Jesus in our daily lives. Our mind may not be right focused on the Lord, though we love him. But as soon as something happens, we get in a panic and wake up Jesus. They were faced with a situation that they could not control. And instead of reacting in the faith that Jesus had taught them, they rudely woke up Jesus in great fear. Master cares not that we perish. The disciples were in great fear, but of course, Jesus spoke with great confidence in mark 4 39 and he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea i want you to take note of the scriptures say he rebuked the wind and said unto the sea peace be still and the wind ceased and there was a calm. We saw the humanity of Jesus sleeping, but here we see his deity. Jesus showed that he had power over the elements and they had to obey Jesus when he spoke. The creator is always going to be more powerful than the creation. No matter how big that sometimes people make the devil, he can never be more powerful than Jesus. Why? Because he is the created. Jesus was limited in a body as a man, but was still God. That's the mystery of the incarnate Lord. In verse 40, Jesus turned to the disciples and said unto them, why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? Verse 41, and they feared exceedingly 
and said one to another, what manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? They didn't really understand the whole thing until Jesus appeared to them after the resurrection. But they did while they were on this earth, the disciples, Jesus gave them power to do what he did and they did what he did in his name. But in these verses, the disciples thought that Jesus was unaware and just like we do. When we praying for a certain thing, crying our eyes out, praying hard, praying every prayer we know to do, but we don't see what we want to see at that moment. And sometimes we may feel that Jesus is unaware and unconcerned. They should have had greater faith in Jesus or Jesus wouldn't, wouldn't have asked them. How is it that ye have no faith? This storm was a teaching moment for the disciples. Instead of the disciples trusting in the Lord, they accused him of forsaking them by saying, care is not that we perish. Think about the storms in our lives that cause us great anxiety. We have two choices. We can worry and assume that Jesus no longer cares. Or you can resist the fear and put your trust in the Lord. You can not only pray, but you can fast and pray so that your flesh will not overtake you. Your flesh will not be ruling during these times of hardship that your eyes are looking at. Resist the fear and put your trust in the Lord. I think it's important to note that this storm came while they were en route to the region of the Gerasenes. The Bible says that he rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, peace be still. You know, the devil always wants to imitate Jesus. The Bible calls him an angel of light. And Jesus, God allows things to happen just so our faith can come up a notch. Could we consider that the devil may have activated this storm? I believe there is a spiritual reason for the storm. Let's look for a minute at the next chapter in Mark chapter 5. Where Jesus met the man that was demon possessed. Mark chapter 5. Verses 1 through 6. And they came over unto the other side of the sea. Into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship. Immediately there met him out of the tombs. A man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs and no man could bind him. No, not with chains because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the fetters broken in pieces neither could any man tame him and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones but when he saw jesus just remember verse six but when he saw jesus afar off he ran and worshiped him so if you read the rest of this account, you will see the confrontation between Jesus and this demon possessed man. 
But I find it very interesting to note in verse 6 that the demons could not keep him from Jesus. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. That means that man's will was more powerful than those demons in that instance. He was fully demon possessed. He couldn't even be around people. He was bound with chains and fetters. And there are some people like that in the day that we live in. We just haven't seen them quite yet. So we have to know what if one came through the door with assistance, somebody brought them in and walked them in and set them down right behind you. Would you be filled with fear? Would you be ready to get up and head for the hills? <laughs> or would you rise up in your spirit in the name of Jesus? Or would you leave it for the pastor? Suppose there were two of them that came through the door. Would you leave that second one for the pastor? Or would you rise up? And while they're sitting there, and if it's in the middle of the sermon, would that pastor be able to complete his sermon knowing that the people sitting in the congregation have the word of God in them to the measure that they can speak the word of God and they can believe peace be still like Jesus did when the disciples came to him. It was a supernatural warfare that was going on in route because the devil was trying to stop what was about to happen. And if they had made it over the coast to the garrisons, if they had made it over there, that man would have still been in the tombs, beating his head up, cutting himself. Jesus had to get over there. But he was down there sleeping. It was the disciples that were scared. It was the disciples didn't use the authority that Jesus had given them, that he had taught them. The word of God isn't just a mantle, a, a centerpiece in our lives. It is part of our being. It should consume our whole organism so that we can speak naturally the word of God. If we're caught by surprise, somebody come through the door. We've got to be ready to meet the spiritual challenges that we have up ahead of us. Yes, the sea might seem calm right now. But God has called us as a church, the body of Christ, to be ready when people come looking for Jesus. They want to come and worship him that no demon would be able to stop them from worshiping him. Are we ready to do the work of God? That's what I'm trying to say. We got to be ready. We don't know what God will bring in front of us. But I brought this verse up to show you, and I already explained it, that the demonic hindrances were by the enemy before a great victory. I believe that the storm that the disciples and Jesus faced on the way to the Gerasenes was a demonic hindrance. To stop this man in Mark in the next chapter, Mark chapter five, from getting his freedom. He is shown in these verses in Mark chapter 515 as a man free of demonic possession. Demonic the possessed people aren't supposed to come in a church. The church doesn't have demonic possession in it. It's free of demonic possession. That was back in that, the first century. Believe me, it's in this century too. To varying degrees. Why? Because 
most Christians have been taught that you can't get a demon with the Holy Spirit inside of you. I say that you still have your will. You still have a will to choose. What makes you any different if a man that goes and sit up at a bar and says, give me six beers and he's demon possessed. But you as a Christian going to challenge God and you're going to go in that bar and you're going to sit at the bar and say, give me 12 beers. Devil, you can't possess me because I have the Holy Spirit inside of me. That's insanity. That doesn't even make sense. So if the Holy Spirit is in me, I won't be in that bar. You see the logic? Does that make sense? We have to know that the devil's after your soul, even though you're a Christian. He's not leaving you alone because you're a Christian. Matter of fact, he doesn't have to mess with the, the man that sitting up in that bar in the six beer because he's already got him. He wants you ordering those 12 beers because you gave your life to Jesus. Now he wants you back. And he'll get you back too. Jesus spoke to the storm, but he gave his disciples and us the power to use his name in Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Also in Mark eleven twenty three to 24. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain. Remember, I said that word of God goes into you. You must speak it out. It's not to stay in you like the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea has no outlet so that anybody could just lay there and float because there's no outlet. The word of God must have an outlet. You're living it in your life. You're speaking it. You're witnessing. Your life shows the word of God manifested. Your life illustrates the word of God and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall say that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. So practice speaking. Just like I said in, in sermons past, when you first do something, it's like riding a bike when you first get on it. You're a little bit wobbly because you don't have confidence. But as you get on that bike because you're determined to ride the bike, you start riding it with confidence. As you fill yourself up with the word of God and start speaking the word of God, you will gain confidence. Your faith will grow and you will be speaking to the mountain. If you speak to the mountain and it doesn't seem to budge, do what the Jesus said. Speak. Keep on speaking. Keep on asking. Keep on seeking. Keep on knocking. Don't just give up like the disciples did. God, can't you see that we're perishing? God has not forsaken us and he will not forsake us. The disciples did what Jesus did in Luke 9, 1, also in Matthew 10, 1, also in Luke 10, 1, he appointed other 70 to do what he did. And in Mark 16, 17 and 18, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. He said them that believe. He didn't say any fivefold ministry or any star Christian. He says them that believe. So the word of God and doing the things of God are not just for the pastor and for the minister. It is for them that believe. 
They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. The Bible says believers can have the peace of God even in the storms. Rest in the Lord and find peace in the storms. In John 14, 7. Through God's peace, we can have confident assurance in any circumstance. Peace throughout our entire being. That's important. We've got to find whether God steals that storm or he takes you through that storm. You still have to have peace going through the storm. We spoke on anxiety and depression, and we talked about how the two are paired. Usually with anxiety, depression follows, or depression, then anxiety. We have to stay away from fear. We have to stay away from torment and the things that keep us from seeking God. We must have peace like a river in our spirit. And we can't get that through Facebook. We can't get that through YouTube. We can't get that through the media. We can only get it through the word of God and practicing the word of God. Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Be careful. That word is translated anxious. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. But God, I already requested that of you and nothing's happening. That's exactly what the enemy wants us to do he wants us to point the finger at god see god has forsaken you that's what he wants us to do and he steals our peace and instills fear the lord will strengthen us and give us the courage to keep on trusting in deuteronomy 31 6 that's a good scripture there be strong and of good courage how many haven't felt strong and of good courage with some of the things that we've been going through? Right after that, it says, fear not. Don't be anxious. Don't be afraid. Nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee like the disciples in that boat they thought jesus had failed them but he got up and said why is it that you have no faith isaiah 12 2 also in psalm 107 29 which we read at the beginning he maketh the storm a calm so that the waves thereof are still Nahum 1 7 also Isaiah 41 10 as we close for all you mothers and women out there praying for lost loved ones to find Jesus and be saved you're praying for the sick and dying you're seeking comfort for the loss of a loved one you're praying for the wayward or those addicted to drugs, alcohol. They may be incarcerated or in trouble with the law, etc. You're praying for a troubled marriage or for God to restore a marriage. You're praying to have a child. Whatever the storm you're facing, take it to the Lord and leave it with him. Don't get at your wits end like the sailors in Psalm 107, like the, the disciples in Mark. Because when you get at your wits end, you start, you turn the corner, you start going back into not trusting God. 
you start back going back and not even going to God and even praying. And some of us can get like that. That's why we need each other. That's why we need each other's back. We need to at least be praying in the spirit for one another. We may not know each other's needs. We don't have to know each other's needs. But if somebody wants to tell us, we can pray for a specific need. But if you have the ability to pray in the spirit, you're praying the will of God. Stay close to him and his word, prayer and praise. And after you have done all, stand. Just as Jesus still the storm in that day, he will still the storms in our lives today. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we lift all mothers and women. We thank you for them, Lord. We pray your comfort and peace over each one. We pray that every need will be met, O oh God. Let your perfect love cast out all fear in the name of Jesus. For those who have heavy hearts listening to this, we pray, Lord, that you would comfort them. For those who are, feel hopeless because they feel their prayers are not being answered, God, give them hope and increase their faith in Jesus' name. We stand against all spiritual warfare attacking these women and their families in the name of Jesus and other family members we stand against the supernatural warfare that's going on in the name of Jesus. We pray that you put the heavenly host around their homes and that the fire of the Holy Spirit surrounds them in Jesus' name. We pray that those seeking loved ones to be saved, that their prayers will be answered. We stand against all demonic hindrances that are causing a delay in breakthroughs in Jesus' name. We loose the enforcement of prayers that we have prayed previously and that the women praying will have the strength to stand through the storms in Jesus name. Lord, that you will move heaven and earth for all families in the name of Jesus. We pray for those who have loved ones involved with alcohol, drugs, sex, partying, guns, incarceration or law breaking and all forms of rebellion, we stand with you and we bind these forces in Jesus' name. We pray that our family members will fall out of love with these things and that every driving force of spiritual blindness and deafness and all deception are bound in the name of Jesus. We loose God's word and spirit and all the prayers of godly saints in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for marriages and family relationships. We bind all marriage, breaking, divorce, no love, no desire for one another, and all outside relationships that affect the marriages in Jesus' name. Father, the Spirit of God resurrected Jesus from the grave and can rejuvenate and restore dead marriages and other family relationships that have been affected negatively in Jesus name we pray for every child that is a part of these families and that your protection and guidance will be on each child in Jesus name keep them from the hand of the evil one in the name of Jesus we loose the Holy Spirit's intervention in strong conviction and that your spirit will soften the hearts of all involved in the name of Jesus Christ we thank you as we lose your peace, healing, and deliverance over every relationship in Jesus' name. We also pray that those seeking marriage will receive God's mate, and we forbid anyone to come along as a counterfeit in the name of Jesus. Lord, that they will know the right one instantly. We also lift up those women attempting to have children, and Father, that you will bless their womb abundantly, and heal them of anything that keeps them from having children in Jesus name. 
thank you, Lord, for the faith to move mountains. We pray to have the strength and courage to trust in you, Lord, and believe that you have everything under control, that you are the God of the storms. We agree that we will see big answers to our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said.